So the topic today is going to be knowing your effectiveness as a leader. I'm starting with this because we need to start from a start point. Only then will you know how far can you grow. Many of us start to become leader this way, unintentional. We were once single contributor, fantastic single contributor. Then one day our boss, hey, there's this opening. Maybe this guy can fit or this lady can fit. Said, hey, okay, let's promote him and her. All right? And then we were placed in a position of having to look after people with no idea of what to do. They don't train us. So I'm going to go into the Bible now, into two characters that have this thing what we call leadership lead. So every one of us has a lead. It's an invisible lead that limits your leadership effectiveness. In order to be a better leader, more effective leader, you need to raise your leadership lead. So in the Bible, there are two people who are very contrasting. One was King Saul. The other is King David. So King Saul had a very low lid, whereas David had a high lid. And I'll show you why. They were both mentored by Samuel, and Saul never really understood the nature of leadership. And the interesting thing was that when he was announced to be king, he went to hide. He never moved the monarchy other than his charism because he was tall and handsome. When God decided that, no, Saul, you're no longer going to be king, he didn't accept it. He said, it's my entitlement. On the other hand, David was different. David was a shepherd boy, seized the opportunity to learn, to be a leader. And then he built the army in preparation for building the kingdom. Took over Jerusalem, made it into a city, and then attracted. So David had a higher lead than Saul. Although Saul was king, David at that time wasn't. The other thing that we look at is when Goliath came and challenged the uh, Israelites, technically, uh, Saul's supposed to face him. Well, he's the king uh, and he's the best fighter. But what happened? He go and hide. But David, being a shepherd boy, said, yeah, I'll go. So David was courageous enough to say, let's go. Let's do the right thing. And because he did that, he lifted the lid of the army. Because at that time, the army under Saul, they were afraid because Saul didn't dare to go forth. And so the army was also kept by Saul's lid, which was a low lid. And then both had things to change. Right? Saul, he did some sacrifice that was not meant to be done was only to be done by the high priest. Samuel told him no. He says, forget it, I'm the king. So because of his pride, he continued to do what he did. But David, when he was found out that he had adultery with uh, Bathsheba and sent her husband to be killed, Nathan approached him and said, you have sinned against the Lord. What did he do? And that's what the leader is about. Leadership is about being able to go from authority to humility when the time is necessary. So David lifted the lid for his personal improvement, right? He did something for himself and then for the army and then for God's people. I just want to show a, a difference between boss and a leader. So I'm taking into consideration Saul and David now, right? So David's on the right and Saul's on the left. So the boss drives your employees, whereas the leader coaches them. So Saul drives his people because he's just very proud and egoistic. And David, hey, fine, let's try and do this. So that's why a lot of people would follow David. Saul used his kingship to get things done. Whereas David is goodwill. So even for leaders, we need to look at it from that perspective. Saul instilled fear. Some bosses, they shout. And I've worked for bosses like that. Every Monday morning, it's like Daniel into the lion's den. <laughs> and that's not how a leader should be. A boss says, I. It's me. Everything that has happened is me. Whereas the others say, it's we. When you run a race, a leader who runs a race with his people will not cross the finish line himself. He will wait for everybody and cross together. That's a leader. Bosses put the blame on the breakdown, whereas leader will help to fix it. Boss will use people, whereas the leader will develop people. Boss takes all the credit, the leader gives the credit. If the team wins, the team takes the credit. If the team loses, the leader takes the blame. That's the way it should be. He commands, he asks. A boss focuses on only work. As far as you're concerned, if you work for me, you're a digit. Get it done. But for a leader, they focus on the people. How can I work with you? How can I help you to get it done? Similarly, go. I'm helping you understand from the boss versus leader and the manager versus leader. So that's the difference also for managers and leaders. Huh? A manager will tell you and instruct. A leader will sell and encourage. So in other words, a leader will sell you the idea, sell you the vision. Once you buy in, it comes together, encourages you to come. A manager will say, if it's not broken, don't fix it. So he, he accepts status quo very happy, or she very happy, don't want to rock the boat. But the leader will say, okay, if it's not broken, 
how can we make it better? And it's like the Japanese. A little a watch for them, a little small tweak here and there makes improvements. So it's called Kaizen, continuous improvement. Now this one reminds me of the Pharisees. The Pharisees say, rules are rules. Ten commandments from ten, they became 613. But they will, they will impose all this on the people, but they won't lift a finger. The leader does the right thing. So when Jesus came, he did the opposite of what the Pharisees were doing. Jesus came to do the right thing, not to do it right. To a manager, everything's a problem. You know, you notice everybody says, oh, the problem is, the problem is, the pro-. hello. It's an opportunity. It's not a problem. So Steve Jobs says, management is about persuading people to do things they do not want to do. Leadership is about inspiring people to do things they never thought they could. A fisherman who became the leader of our church, Peter. The apostles became leaders of our church. Jesus inspired them to become who they are at that time. So there's also something I want to share with you about levels of leadership. Where are you as a leader? So these are the five levels, right? Position, permission, production, people development and pinnacle. Okay? So what does it mean by position level? People follow you because they have to. Your children follow you because they have to. No choice. So the only influence you have as a leader with position is your title. I am a parent, listen to me. Or I am the boss, listen to me. Next would be permission level. What does it mean? Permission level means I give my boss permission to lead me. We're talking about relationships now. So when I first start in a new place, I start with position. But I need to move up. I need to form relationships with the people that I lead. Make friends. Know them better. Once I have a relationship, I can move up to the next level. Third is production level. What it means is that I have been there, done that. I'm a proven manager. I'm a proven leader. And the person that is following me wants to be like me maybe in five years' time. So he wants to emulate me. So they follow because they want to accomplish a purpose. Okay, momentum starts. They're learning, they're starting the momentum. People development is the fourth level. So we have to use our ability as leaders to empower others. In other words, we give them the opportunity to try. So we're reproducing ourselves. And level five are all these uh, gurus like Nick Voytage. We're talking about Les Brown, John Maxwell and Brian Tracy. People basically, they follow because of what they represent. All right? So we talked about boss versus leader. We talked about manager versus leader. We talked about the five levels of leadership. So I'm trying to help you situate. As I'm speaking, think for yourself, where are you? You may be on level four where you are today in this company. The minute you change department, change company, wherever a new staff comes in, you will go down to level one again. Why? When a new staff comes into your team, you need to start from level one with them. Build up to level two, three, four, five again. Because you don't know them, they don't know you. You cannot use, if you're on level four, you cannot use level four to work with them. You have to start from one. But you are able to get from one to four faster because you've been there. Leadership is something that we can teach you. It's a teachable skill. It's not something that you're born with. Not everyone is born with leadership, but you can learn leadership. Leadership.